Hezbollah started using pagers like this because it was worried about Israeli electronic surveillance. It thought that this old-fashioned technology was potentially more secure than smartphones, but that turns out to have been a deadly mistake. What's important, I think, is to have some actual principles. Principles like, I don't believe in war, I don't believe in violence. Then, if you are burr, if you stray, if you walk away, if you sin, you will know the position you're in. What we live in is a time where there aren't any actual principles, there is only utility. I feel this has grown out of materialism and individualism. Let me show you what I mean by that, by using this post of Edward Snowden's. Looking at the reaction to Israel's Unabomber style booby trap campaign from people who actually live in the region, it's created a hundred times more enemies than Hezbollah could ever hope to recruit. Even from a military perspective, it's terribly short-sighted. So, in a sense, Edward Snowden is making the point that even from a practical perspective, it's not sort of not a sensible strategy. It's kind of the same as what I was saying about Tim Waltz and Kamala Harris and the censorship. <laughs> In a, is it John Rawls? He was a sort of, he's admittedly a kind of liberal social democrat who used the metaphor of the pizza. If you were cutting the pizza, but you didn't get to choose first, how would you cut that pizza up? You'd probably cut it up relatively equal. It's a simple sort of metaphor for it. But what it, I suppose, enables us to understand is we've long let go some time ago of clear and reliable principles. Is it because of the death of religion? Is it because of the fall of the Berlin Wall? Is it because rampant globalism and bureaucracy has overtaken us? Is it because it seems our cherished principles that were once regarded as universal have been slowly eroded as we've become little more than commodities or the consumers of commodities? Let's have a look at how a couple of news outlets covered the recent walkie-talkie pager story. And let's have a look at Let's have a look at the principles that it suggests to us before looking at how Lindsey Graham and uh, Ryan Ruth have some surprising things in common. This is why I think it's so important for us to connect with principles rather than outcomes. Don't you think, like, I wonder what it would be like if CNN, MSNBC, and let's include Fox just to make sure that the experiment works. Wouldn't it be good if they were given the outlines of a story saying, this group has done this thing to this group. But we're not going to tell you what the group is. We're only going to tell you what the thing is. We're not going to tell you who, who the targets are and who the perpetrators are. And then you can use the principle, like, you know, whether it's viable or right to use explosives in a foreign country. And if it's all right to use explosives in a foreign country, then everyone should be okay to use explosives in a foreign country. And if it's all right for children to be killed, then I suppose everyone's got the right to kill children. And quite soon, I suppose you get to a point of something approaching a universal position of, well, I wouldn't want my children to be killed. I wouldn't mind if someone for a while would suspend them in like that thing that Han Solo was in, just to give me a break. But killing children, surely that's as close to universal as we're likely to get. Let's have a look at how this news story is being covered. For example, first of all, on a couple of news outlets globally. Check it out. Lebanon is on edge tonight after another tech attack on Hezbollah. This time, walkie-talkies have exploded. <laughs> killing at least 20 people and injuring hundreds more. It happened just as crowds gathered to mourn those killed yesterday by deadly pager blasts. There are also reports solar energy systems detonated in several homes. Israel's responded by declaring a new phase of the war has begun. The logic of making all these devices explode is to do it as a preemptive strike before a major military operation. Hezbollah started using pagers like this because it was worried about Israeli electronic surveillance. It thought that this old-fashioned technology was potentially more secure than smartphones, but that turns out to have been a deadly mistake as those pagers started detonating yesterday in a massive chain of explosions. Hezbollah is saying this is a covert operation carried out by Israel, targeting its members. Now, the former director of the CIA tells us what appears most likely is that Israel somehow got into the supply chain of these pagers and planted small explosives in them before they were delivered to Hezbollah. The question is whether an attack on this scale will cause Hezbollah to back down or whether it will provoke them into all-out war. 
I suppose it's likely that what it will elicit is a response of some description and will likely lead to an escalation. I'm trying my best as just a person who's, I suppose, not directly affected and only an observer and a pundit to remain able to observe what principles are at play here. Here's a way that might help you to understand it. During, or this is the way I understand it, you might understand it in a thousand different ways, I suppose, but different from one another. Do you remember when the Bush administration were vilified because of their attacks on Iraq when apparently there were never discovered weapons of mass destruction that had to be sought out and the Bush administration were condemned. Bush himself was ridiculed. The names like Rumsfeld, Wolfowitz and Cheney were bywords for globalism, imperialism, war and destruction. Then we find ourselves in 2024 and an endorsement from Bush staffers. Kamala Harris has received endorsements from over 200 Bush staffers. The Cheneys, every single member of the family, seem to be endorsing Kamala. And that's, of course, presented to us as if it's um, some kind of brilliant and unifying act. But the unification has already occurred. You have a uniparty. In the same way, did you notice in those newscasts, there was a kind of tacit celebration of ingenuity. They're using pages and stuff because they think it's going to be safer. But Mossad were ahead of them. I wonder if it's possible to even have a conversation let alone create content where you can simultaneously in your mind hold Israeli folk for whom you care and love, people in Gaza for whom you care and love, and walk in a principled fashion through it. Is it possible? Or do you think, let me know in the comments on Rumble or You Awaken Wonders, whether or not you just have to sort of go, no, I'm going to hate someone. I'm going to hate someone. We can't continue to bring you this beautiful content without the support of our partners. Wages are flat, expenses are up. It's hard to manage all the bills without grabbing for credit cards. If you're a homeowner and frustrated with that cycle, make a 10 minute no obligation call to American Financing. Interest rates are dropping. If you're constantly carrying a credit card balance each and every month with a rate in the 20s, American Financing can show you how to use the equity in your home to get you out of debt. Be careful, of course. Their salary-based mortgage consultants are saving their customers an average of $800 a month. That sounds like a good offering. If you get started today, you may not have to make next month's mortgage payment without their assistance. If you're American, you can call American Financing today on 866-574-2500. That's 866-574-2500. It's only available to Americans out there. Or visit AmericanFinancing.net forward slash Russell. And if you think that what we're really doing now is choosing who to hate, then you're going to love Lindsey Graham and Ryan Ruth. Because Lindsey Graham is, you know, a neocon, a militarist, a military industrial complex stooge. And Ryan Ruth is almost someone that I feel like I might have identified with once. He seems like a kind of idealistic, if misinformed, righteous guy who believes in something. And yet both of them are ultimately saying the same thing, at least according to this fascinating piece of analysis by Tucker Carlson. Um, and I'm, I'm watching this. They're literally telling me that this guy whom they've arrested is a Trump supporter. Huh? So you flip channels and then you learn that ah, I flipped over to a channel I used to work on. And there's Lindsey Graham. And I know, I know, I know. <laughs> He's a Republican senator from one of the most conservative states. How does that happen, by the way? If democracy is real, how is Lindsey Graham a senator? But whatever. So I'm watching Lindsey Graham, and Lindsey Graham's looking right into the camera. He's like, you know who did this? Iran. Iran? So I look into this. Yeah, well, that's for sure. Well, it turns out someone just yelled, warmonger. Well, the guy who shot Trump was also a warmonger. And in fact, the closer you look at it, the more you realize his politics are exactly the same as Lindsey Graham's. He's a neocon. He literally volunteered in Ukraine. And Lindsey Graham's like, no, Iran did. It's like, no, you have no opinions that are different from this guy's. And you're lying to me. And the audience I used to speak to five nights a week, you were lying to them. I'm shouting this in my hotel room. Nobody heard me. My wife was brushing her teeth. She's like, what is that? They're lying. 
dying. <laughs> it drove me completely insane. And there's no mention of the fact that this guy, who, by the way, has been interviewed by every media outlet in Washington, this guy was like a very famous guy. You, you may not even know this. There's only really one place to learn any facts at all, and that's Elon Musk's social media app. It's crazy. I don't have a TV at home, so I'm spared most of this. I have no idea what's going on. By the way, I strongly recommend ignorance. If you're looking to stay happy in a moment like this, just know less. Unfortunately, my job requires me to know more, but if you think about it, did God punish Adam and Eve for ignorance? I don't think he did. He punished them for knowledge, so maybe I shouldn't watch cable news. This was my, I don't wanna know what they're saying, but this week I've had to pay close attention. And every single thing is a lie, either directly, or it's a lie more, and much more prevalent and much more sinister, it's a lie by omission. They're just not telling you the facts. And without belaboring the point, I'm using this as just one example among a countless number of examples where reality is completely distorted and the average person has not only no idea but no way of knowing what the truth is. So the guy who is now in custody for attempted murder against the Republican nominee, the former U.S. President, Donald Trump, that guy has been interviewed countless times by every big media outlet in the United States. He's got, you know, a criminal record the length of your arm, 20 charges, including possession of weapons of mass destruction. The New York Times didn't bother learn any of that before they held him up as a freedom fighter in Ukraine, where he was living. And then the piece describes the contact he's had with members of Congress and their staffs and other U.S. government agencies. And you're like, wait a second, that's the same guy who brought a rifle with a scope to a golf course in South Florida to murder Donald Trump, and he's had all these contacts with U.S. government agents. He's like, I don't know what, the, what that's about, but I think it's time to find out. No? Yes. But no one's gonna find out. It's just gonna be memory holding. In a week, it will never have happened. And you'll be the crazy person for remembering. People are like, what? Didn't some Trump supporter bring a rifle because you're against gun control or something? It's like, no, 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 that's not what happened. A guy who was a darling of the New York Times who has the exact same worldview as Lindsey Graham decided to try and murder Donald Trump and it'll be completely gone, it will have disappeared. It's interesting, isn't it? It's an interesting perspective. Horseshoe politics is almost a cliched phrase these days and maybe in two peculiar and anomalous examples like dear Lindsey Graham, God love him, God bless him, that unusual porcine and sweltering individual, that odd little Jim Henson creation, that peculiar occupant of the labyrinth, so odd and idiosyncratic. I half expect him to start worshipping David Bowie's wizard king, pixie king at any, at any moment. And him and one of the Trump assassins having a sort of a shared purview shows us how messy things have become. So I suppose principles are costly, aren't they? If you have principles like I am anti-establishment, I recognize that I have a personal responsibility to participate in changing the world. There are points where you will make mistakes. Certainly I make lots of mistakes, but at least you'll know when you're doing them rather than continually metastasizing into some creature of convenience. Anyway, let me know what you think about that in the comments and the chat, guys. And uh, remember to like and subscribe wherever you're watching this. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.